Hello, this is Martin Brossman, and this is a video on how to just sign up for the free ChatGPT. Real basic, and many people haven't even signed up for it yet, so I wanted to demonstrate this. We're doing this on a desktop. I recommend desktop or laptop first, and then when you download the app, make sure you download the correct app, the free one. I'll put that in the text below. Then you can sign in with the same sign-in that you used here. So there's several ways to do it. One, you can click sign up if you've never signed in at all, and then follow the instructions to sign up by putting in the email you want to use and click continue. The other way is you can sign in with one of these areas. People are a little more uh, concerned about security tend to prefer to completely sign in with a separate email and a password whatever you're comfortable with. For this tutorial, I'm going to sign in with a Google account I use for teaching. So I'm going to click continue with Google, and then I've grayed out the different accounts that I'm using. And when you do this, you don't have to go through the process of signing up from ground zero, but you do have to fill in some information. This is uh, my nickname as a kid, and then I'll be blurring out putting in my birth date, and then click Agree. Then it has some text here you might want to read, facts, you know, obviously use good judgment. Understand you don't want to put highly sensitive confidential data in here because it may be used for training the system. And then, of course, fact check. Don't assume whatever it says is absolutely correct. Click OK to go. And then it's giving, it, at this time, access to the latest ChatGPT 4.0, which is pretty exciting. It's a little bit limited. You can drop down to an earlier version if you want to. So you may notice some limitations that show up. Now that you've signed in, let's go over what you're looking at. Right down here at the bottom, see at the bottom here, this is where you put in what they call your prompt. And it's something you want ChatGPT to do. An action. We go into this pretty extensively in our book. I would start by saying, what is... Now, <clears throat> once you press return or enter on the key, it's going to go. So what if you want to put more, maybe generate a line feed or something else? You'll need to hold down shift and then return and or enter on your keyboard. You hold down the shift and hit it and see how it generates a line feed. So then you can add some more stuff. And this is kind of a challenge for new people because they're like, uh, I'd like you to go over the following three items and then it starts doing its thing. The paperclip lets you upload things. Now there are size limitations on uh, how big the document you can upload is, but what I invite you to do is just get in there and play. So let's just start with this simple prompt and we can click the up arrow or I can press return. Okay, so now it gives us some information. So you can start by asking it questions and see what response it gives. And as it said in the beginning, make sure to not take everything as absolute truth here because it will hallucinate and we go over that pretty extensively in our training. The next thing to understand is when you're in a session, this is like a session we're in, if you ask another question, it's going to reference what you said before. So you don't just have to start over. So I might say, summarize in one sentence. And then I press return or enter. It depends on what it says on your keyboard. Okay, then it took this and summarized it into one sentence me five examples of, show me five examples of well-written prompts. So you notice how it's referencing what occurs. What if you want to ask a different question? What if you want to start over and not have it reference what just occurred? Well, you're going to have to go in the upper left-hand corner right here, upper left-hand corner, and new chat. You see that? So it's it really refers to this as a conversation with ChatGPT. So this is starting a new chat conversation. New chat. Now it's there. Now you notice here is the one I just had. And let's see. Tell me who is the ham operator. K-I-4-C-F-S. That's me. Let's see if it has something. 
So it identifies, it doesn't know exactly who I am, but it does know that this is a call sign and you can see it's making its best attempt to, to answer based on the information it has. The other thing to note is in the upper left-hand corner, notice ChatGPT, a little down arrow, and based on different versions available, you can change it. Now, you can upgrade to Plus that will give you more performance, but you also have a little temporary chat. And this is where when you create a temporary chat, it says not in history, it's not used to train the system, and while in temporary chat, GPT won't use or create memories, custom instructions will still be be followed if you have them embedded. So let's go ahead and try this out. Let's ask him, who is Martin Brossman? And it should have something. I have like 18,000 index pages of content on Google. Okay, try another one. See Where does he teach? It's still following this conversation, but it's not saving this information. So now let's go ahead and get out of this. So chat GPT, I'll turn that off, and it's gone. Do you notice it's not on the left-hand side? Now, I still would not just put your Social Security or anything like that, but if you don't want to make it available for potential future training, you'd use that temporary. One more thing I want to show you that's kind of cool is you probably heard about GPTs. Explore GPTs. In the free version, you can't create them. Think of them like Sort of like apps or mini chat GPTs that have been trained on certain topics. So I made one for amateur radio and also made one for me, myself, where you can ask questions about me as a, a coach. But let's do the ham radio since we started it. So we click Explore Chat GPTs. This comes up and then you can put in search here. And I'm going to paste in because I saved it. That's the one I created. And sure enough, it shows up right here. So I'll click on it. And this is the GPT I created recently for fun about ham radio. Now it's kind of like a subsystem here. So I can ask who is, remember I asked before, KI4CFS? Let's see what it says. Now it knows something about it because I trained this GPT on a large amount of free amateur radio information on the internet, as well as information about me. And so it's organized it. I did not write these paragraphs. It's generating them based on the data I gave it. Then going back to where we were, click ChatGPT right here. And notice on the left-hand side, it is saving the GPT. I can always remove it if I want or hide it from the, the bar uh, or keep or I can keep it in the sidebar, which is what it will do by default. This is intended as a very basic introduction to signing up for ChatGPT. Check the text below for two of my GPTs and one that Dr. Justin Rose made about himself. Try them out. I've also put in the text below the apps that are chat gpt app so be very careful you can get an app that looks like chat gpt and it's going to ask you to pay and then it, you're paying someone else to then access chat gpt so i'll give you the ones below you want to sign up use the same email on the desktop that you use on the app for and sign in and then you can access your material across both of them. This is Martin Brossman. If you came from one of our trainings, go to the next lesson. And if you found this online, remember to click subscribe and the bell. Have a fantastic day and check the text below.